second in-depth interview, chat, conversation, whatever you want to call it, of the year. Let's make some noise in the studio for Lethal Bizzle. What's happening, bro? Wow. First of all, um, before, Happy New Year, man. Yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year bro. Let's get the, the, the... Yeah, get all that out of the way. When did you stop saying that? Like, is I it said, maybe like the 20th or... I, don't I said know. the exact same thing to Devlin earlier. Yeah, like, it's mad. Did you know stop saying it? Probably like end of this week. I'm just yeah, going to yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. people say Happy New Year after this week, I'm just yeah, going to be like... That's the safe, one. Safe, fam. I'm just going to do man, that. Man, saying it in February now. <laughs> <Then mad. laughs> so, Biz. Yes. Like, Fresh off of the back of, of premiering the brand new yeah, single last night. It, it, my phone's died about a hundred times after like, that I'm, play, man. It's it's kind of mental. I'm not surprised. Like the record is an absolute. Like saying it's a monster or a smash or a mm. banger, I, I, I don't feel like I'm giving it enough justice because I called many records bangers and yeah, smashes. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, like it's mad. Yeah, it's mad. I think that's the best way to describe it. I don't know. How to just, I don't know. <laughs> it's mad. It's mad. You know, like. I'm trying to think back like the feeling I had with this record there's a few records I had this feeling with and an obvious one is Pow I mean when I made Pow I used to play the beat over and over by itself in my car and I was doing that for this just oh I wouldn't even listen to the vocal I'd listen to the beat and then I'll play the vocal afterwards and I'd just be like yo this is something but I just like to be modest though I don't like to be like oh it's gonna be a massive hit like Pow but the response has been overwhelming ridiculous yeah like, my phone is like I heard from people I ain't spoke to in a couple of years like crazy oh, hey bitch what's going on man you cool yeah <laughs> yeah that shit is sick you know like, hey, where's, the, where's the next show though I'm like oh yeah, yeah. hello happy new year cuz cool. <laughs> but um yeah it, it's a great way to start 2017. No, nah, definitely. I wanted to. Um, I wanted to start it right. You know, um, I took a few few months off in the last year to record. I was doing lots of shows over the summer. I said, you know what? I want to just get the album ready. And uh, and yeah, um, it was a it was quite an easy process, man. Like big heavy trackers in the production. They just sent me like a batch of beats, and they've got quite a few beats on the album as well, man. Sick salute, heavy trackers, man. We're gonna talk about the record. We're gonna talk about the forthcoming album, Lennox yes. Road, in yes. detail. But I feel like just to put everything into context because you've been doing this thing for like a long yeah, time just long like time. myself like a long time we've a long been doing time. this we've been doing this before it was them, a, before it was a paycheck listen I have to go seen, college next day listen <laughs> we've, we've seen them come and go yeah trust, trust. And we're gonna go back to, to I guess the very beginning man because East London yeah. is where it all started for yeah. you, just like myself. Yes, just like Neighbors, so many, man. just like so many grime artists. Definitely, definitely, man. But if we were to, you know, take it back to, let's say, the mid nineties, the mid nineties, Leighton, <sighs> where you grew up in yeah. East London. Wow. What What was a young lethal bizzle getting up to? <sighs> what was a young lethal bizzle getting up to? I was a naughty boy. That's <laughs> I was a very naughty boy. I don't, I don't want no cases coming back on me. But um, I was um, I was in school and um. Music was just a fun thing. I used to play football. And at that time, people got to understand there was no real avenues or there was no like UK urban street stars. Like it was drum and bass. Literally, like it was just yeah. Skibbity, Shabba. That was like my inspiration as well as the Americans, Jay-Z. Wu-Tang Clan was a big influence on me as well growing Indeed. up. But um, but yeah, man, I was just on the block, just on the, on the council estate playing football, having rhyme, just mucking around, not ever thinking that it was going to be my career because I didn't think it was possible. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd just be in uni, you know, having a normal job and this would just be like a little fun thing I did on, on the weekends. Boy, little did we know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Little did we know, like, all these years later, we'd be sitting down exactly, having man. this conversation. Now, you mentioned, you know, during that kind of 90s period, Jungle was like yeah. the first kind of UK yeah, it was. sound that we kind of felt that we could, could relate, relate to directly. Exactly. exactly, English accents, you know, talking about, you know, Gascoigne and, you know, Shabba talking about all the football, the Premier League teams yeah. and stuff like, you was like, yeah, you can relate to that, you know, and um, <clears throat> America's obviously taken over the world over years and years, so it was really interesting to see that you could actually speak with your own accent because them days everyone was like yeah. was doing music was spitting American, American accents American, yeah. so I couldn't really relate to it like <laughs> yeah. I would just rather listen to the Americans that do it properly so Shabba and Skibidi were a huge huge influence you know anytime I see them I, I kind of get weird I'm like bro you don't really understand I'm, I'm the same you like, don't understand like, I have drum and bass guys coming to my show and I'm like mad. I need to pull you aside just to have a quick fan moment bro. trust me back in like 90s yeah, whatever when trust, you've done that mix yeah, and I got I'm it on tape you, like, and it gets me like, I'm telling you like them days there like that was really like to me that was like how people look at I don't know the Drakes of the world yeah. that was that was our stars them days Definitely. so it was um it was it was good to like you know call a fam listening to the Sunday SAS wow. like 
Yeah, they're man. like legendary sets. Legendary. People are like, what are you talking about right now? But yo, some of you probably weren't even born these times, but you miss some really good times, man. They, really. You, you can actually go on YouTube and like search yes, out some of those old to. sets. Like that's, that's the real history right there. Trust now, me. Jungle was kind of like that gateway. It kind of got a lot of us youngsters yeah. like gas like oh there's a there's yes. something that we can actually do and exactly like I, I, I made jungle tunes I've done a bit of DJing to yeah. jungle people kind of dibbled and dabbled yeah like I, I was DJing for a little it, bit I bought some sound labs yes mixing, sound, mi- <laughs> mixing jungle the sound la- li- listen you know, the cheap option you know <laughs> <laughs> that was how listen think you had to do what you had to do yeah, in them straight, days yeah straight straight now um, jungle I felt like we kind of almost missed the jungle boat mm. as such uh, we didn't really get to, to be prominent figures in that because yeah. everyone was really young and yeah. like the jungle scene were, were uh, you know a generation older, yeah, older than us. it was a very very structured yeah, scene yeah, they, had and like, it, they had it pattern already they had the whole thing hierarchy yeah. up and literally like it was something that we got to enjoy but we didn't yeah. really get to, to have yeah, our I couldn't full. get no involvement really then UK Garage came along yeah that's when it changed and yeah. things just started to take you know a turn UK a Garage scene. of course was 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 a music that was I guess you could you could call it um, a genre that was very female led. Yeah. Like when in, when it comes to the music. Yeah, at least. yeah, yeah, definitely. Like the man needs to go to the garage raves because the girls are gonna be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And all the muses are very very happy. Everyone used to go there with their Versace shirts and straight jeans and you know loafers. Everyone's gonna be proper <laughs> like you going to the West End like but you're just going down the road like in the ends. And, I had uh, some mad Patrick Cox shoes. Yeah, or, like, trust me, bro. That, that, <laughs> <laughs> that was the settings then. That was the settings then. You know them. Um, crazy. Oh, what's those ones? I I got them from Little Woods. I couldn't afford to buy them, so I got like you know you can get you can pay it off like like pay by. Oh a yeah, month. of course too. But, but I, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I had trainers Trust. on Little Woods. Or I go Sunday market, get ten pound Calvin Klein jumpers like. <laughs> Look like the man, Trust you know the ones. That, that's what it was all about. Now, garage like had everyone raving, and and, and people were were kind of you know well into their teens by now, and, and starting to really like yeah. pick up microphones and decks and and radio stations like rinse and, and yeah. Tons of stations all over the capital yeah. were kind of popping up everywhere and giving these youngsters an yeah, opportunity. I was on radio, like, there was a guy called Gappy Ryder who was my DJ at the time, and he was, like, the pirate radio station king. I think he still is. And uh, he actually started a station on my estate in Boundary. And that was just another thing to do in the weekend. He was like, yo, just come to the floor 46. We've got, like, a studio <laughs> in the kitchen. Like, just come and, yeah, come and do Crazy. your thing, man. And, like, funny enough, like, we'll be on there. And as soon as we come off and walk around the estate, and everyone's like, yeah, man, I heard you on the radio. Yeah, yeah, your lyrics are sick. sick. I was thinking, right, this is fun. So literally, it was just like, yeah, something to do, man. Rather than play football, let's go to the block and, you know, spit some bars on, on in the kitchen. I feel like we should play a record that you, you mentioned earlier. Um, I, I feel like almost every Grime MC had some sort of inspiration from So Solid. Oh, 100%, and that era, man. 100%. I reckon So Solid patterned this whole thing for us, if I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Um, that was the game. That was the game changer for me. I remember being in my boy's um, bedroom and he was playing a So Solid song. Um, I think it was Oh No, that's the word. And then um, next minute, someone said, you know they got a video for this? I'm like, what? They got a video Videos for this? Like what this? do you mean they got a video for this? And these times, like, I don't know, you couldn't, the internet weren't already popping, so you couldn't just go on YouTube. Yeah. I don't think YouTube was even around then. There wasn't, like, so, like, there was wasn't like, the, the, the tools to make nah, a video. It would have nah. cost way too much money. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I literally caught it, I think, on MTV Base or something, like 2 a.m. in the morning, and I was like, wow, like, this is UK, boys. Like, this is my name from the ends. Like, what? They got Averexes on. <laughs> what? Like, dogs. Like, huh? Like, they're in the house party. I was like, this is us, man. This is what we do normally. Like, and that's when I was thought, maybe there is something that like, we can, you know, get out of this. And, you know, I, I didn't think career, but I thought, you know, I was more thinking be popular. And yeah, man, like, the <laughs> gallon will like you. Like, so, um, I think, no, I, so, think so, you, I think you went a little bit further than that, bro. Yeah, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. No, definitely. But at the time, like, you got to understand at the time, it was was so solid and it was like that was it you know what i mean those wow. it, it was that like jay-z was like way too out of our reach you could never be them we're gonna talk about jay-z we'll get to that yeah so we, we touched on the early early yeah like growing up in Leighton, yeah trying to keep yourself out of trouble yeah 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 <laughs> while stumbling across a genre called jungle that we all love then that kind of developed on and, and people kind of started getting into uk garage yes the uk garage music originally you know was catering for, for the females yeah, and yeah. wasn't at all for mcs nah, nah, hosts nah. if anything yes definitely hosts like you know hype up the crowd you know oli 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 you know <laughs> having a good time put your hands in the air sort of vibe but the lyrical aspect wasn't really there i would i would say heartless crew 
definitely did add a bit more of that lyrical element yeah. in the garage world them days. I remember Definitely. seeing them like tearing down raves, man. I remember Bagley's. Legendary venue, bro. I remember one time I see Heartless Crew performing Bagley's and I was just sitting there and I was just like, wow. Like, it was just so epic. Yeah. It was almost like, I don't know, like when you go to a concert in 02, like yeah. it was it was that epic. And I just remember thinking like, wow, like these guys are legends, bro. And they were spitting like proper bars, yeah, you know crazy. what I mean? So I think that was definitely a game changer for them as well. And of course, we, we just played a, a clip of So Solid who were, I guess, you know, they were out of South London, which yes. was the other side of London from from where, yeah. you know, Grime eventually started to really emerge. But their influence and, and like you said, that that mm. turning left and, and making the music more about the MCs, yeah, yeah. which kind of filtered back to East London. Definitely. And to what we were doing. I was part of Pay As You Go. You, yes. you of course, had more fire. Yes, yes, and yes. And things yes. started to heat up. Then I remember, I, I remember this day, like, like it was yesterday. Yeah. There was a barbecue in okay. Leighton. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I remember that. And you had performed that. Oi. Oi for the first time. And it was full of yeah, goons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the men were there. <laughs> All the girls were there. The whole ends that. were there. Like Hot you day. literally like and this is in the times where there wasn't security. Nah. It was like you just had to make yeah, it work. That's it. Just go there with your squad and just, yeah, go there and just try and stay out of trouble. Before basically. before we play it, we got to talk about it. More Fire Crew, of course. Yes. Legendary trio, man. Yeah, man. Foundation, man. Ozzy B. Big up Ozzy, big up Nico. It was weird how that all started because um, me and Ozzy B went to school together. Yeah. And um, after we left school, we kind of, we didn't lose contact, but we kind of lost a bit of contact. So I was still emceeing. He linked up with Nico and started More Fire Crew. And I was with my DJ, Shawnee Bizzle at the time. And then um, they were like, bro, you might as well just join, man. And I was just like, well, we, we might as well, innit? Because we're doing our thing, you're doing our thing. So let's just join up. So we've done more Fire Crew, made a couple songs. Um, when we got to the studio, this studio basically was in Leighton Stone. Big up Chubby Dread, Skenji, the producers. Um, it was in his bedroom. Like the bedroom was like, I don't even know, not really good at square feet, but it weren't big at all. Yeah. It was tiny. And... Um, I was sitting in the room and then uh, we was just having a conversation and I was going to Pirate Radio after us. So I was just killing some time, chilling and they played the Morphite beat and then um, I was like, what, what, what beat is that? And they are like, oh, it's one beat I made. And I was there listening to it. I was like, I've got this hook that I do on the radio and I started singing it. Oh, right, who's that? But they're like, yeah, yeah, put that down, man. Put that down. So I just put it on the mic Sick. and then Ozzy B and Nico came to meet me at, um, at the studio because we was getting radio and they heard it and they were like, Oh, it sounds all right. So Ozzy B made his version that right there. Oh, who's that boy? Ozzy B. Wow. And then Nico, who's at NWE. And then they were like, we got to go radio. So we couldn't finish it. Went to the radio. And I remember being so excited, thinking, wow, we've got something here. We've got something. Next day, went back to the studio, finished the song. And we're just sitting there like, wow, this could be, this This, this sounds like it's all right. We never yeah. thought like charts or anything. We just thought we got a song to perform. We could yeah. do a couple of PAs and all that. Tear um, up them barbecues. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> house parties. Yeah. Then there was a house party. You know, let me take your record box and, yeah. you know what I mean, burn it down. So um, so that's what it was. And then it went on the radio and that barbecue, literally what you what you mentioned, that party in Leighton was the, was the turning point where it was the first time we performed it. And the reaction, because people knew my lyric from the radio, when they heard it on the beat, the whole Bro, place like, went mental. I don't think I'd heard the song. Yeah. I, no, I, I, I don't no, think no, you I'd might, you might not have. It, it was like, it was days or weeks old. And I literally. remember thinking, what the, what yeah, is going yeah, on here? Yeah. Like, it was, it was mad. mad. It was like, mad. I think we'll the barbecue see. nearly got, probably ended up getting yeah, locked no, off Yeah, no, it did anyway. get locked off still. Not, it did not, get locked. not many things made it to the, nah, the never end. never to the end, never. To be fair. Never, never. We've got to play it. Legend. It's ended up at what number seven? Yeah, UK the national charts. charts. On top of the pops with this. And at the time when this happened, this was like winning all the Grammys, yeah, all the Oscars, like the lot. It was crazy. It was unheard of. Crazy. Crazy. Back in like 2001. 2002. 2002 we, made, we made it in like, 2001 in the year March 2000. Fourth of March 2002. I remember crazy. that yesterday. Crazy. Amazing, man. It was probably one of my most enjoyable experiences into the music business, man. Like obviously, the for you always remember your first time, man. Yeah. That just changed changed my life forever, basically, man. That basically was like, well, this is what you got to do forever now. Like, yeah. I dropped out of college. Uh, it was getting too much. I was famous all of a sudden. Everyone wanted to be my mate. It was just getting too crazy. And I you was couldn't just like, ride that bus through through nah, Leighton Stone. I couldn't, bus, bus, I couldn't bus, do like, it no more. It was mad. Like, up, um, Ho Street, Ho Street, Street Stowe, like, it was where too you nuts. The college. Yeah, yeah it's bro, it was too nuts. So I had to literally, my, my tutor was like, look, that you're welcome to come back and finish. I was doing like a national diploma in electronic engineering which was very hard. So I was kind of happy that um, this kind of broke for me because I was like, mate, this this course is doing one. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but um, but yeah, man, it was um, it was a real surreal time for me, man. I was like 16, 17 at the time. Wow. And um, 
it's weird because my parents weren't really rating the music thing. They were like, yo, stay in school, stay in school, do college, do college. And I wanted to, but then this opportunity, I thought, you know, I can't let this opportunity pass, man. And, you know, cut on Sobby Short, number seven. I went Crazy. on top of the pops. Only when I went on top of the pops is when my parents accepted that's, it. That's was, that was that kind was the of only like... time they accepted it. They were like, okay, so you're going to do music now. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you want to do this music. Okay, then. Okay, okay. Okay, then this is what you want to do. You have to do it properly. I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. That after that, they were, they were kind of cool. If you, if you think about it, like you know, parents of of a, a fifteen year old MC today, they yeah. can they they only have to they yeah, can just they look, can look they, they can, can okay, see that this yeah. is a viable choice. Exactly, exactly. In those days, it was like, nah. what do you mean you're going to do, you do mean? music? What music? What music? What? Hey, go to, <laughs> what do you mean? What? I'll send you back to Ghana. You got to live your grand. What do you mean about <laughs> music? Trust. Well, you know, I might have just saved you from that. Nah, it fully did. It fully saved me. And I was just saying off air, man. Like I. Obviously, we're saying a lot of stuff on there, and that was an A list record on Radio One, man. Crazy A list record, no edits, no wow. nothing, no mutes, no anything. Wow, talking about the realest stuff, just daytime, daytime, Greg daytime. James, or yeah, whoever it was. Everyone, <laughs> I don't know who it was, them times, yeah. I'd, I'd love to hear an unedited, unedited oi on daytime, yeah. Scott Mills tomorrow, yeah. like, <laughs> but you know, those days are, those <laughs> days are over. over. Definitely over. So, oh, you know, jokes. Grime was, was beginning, you know, not yet to take shape after Oi, but if we kind of fast forward a year or two, yeah. Grime was really starting to take shape. Yeah. You know, people were forming crews. We had yeah. like Nasty Crew and, and Roll yeah. Deep had, had been formed by Wiley and some of the rest of my lot. And, yeah. you know, Fire Camp, you had kind of yeah. expanded more fire into Fire yeah. Camp. And, you know, that was happening all over East London. Yeah, like, no, definitely. I mean, I think what happened as well is like, I think like, Oi, um, the No Wees, that record with Page of Gold. Like, yeah. I think those records, it, it almost kind of like cemented its own kind of lane. And I think that was like the beginning of like, you know what? It's not really UK Garage. And also there was this like, there was a bit of animosity with the UK Garage lot. They wasn't yeah, really... That, I feel like they felt a little bit threatened. Yeah. And, and I think that kind of like, that kind of like went against them because they yeah. should, I've always really, you've got to embrace change. You've got to embrace the youngers. And I think that they, they rejected us. And um, I think that's when we was like, well, Wiley was, I remember, oh, I remember a funny story one time. Um, it was around, I think it was 2002. It was literally after Page Go versus Heartless Crew. Oh, wow. And um, why not, did, don't remind me about that. Yeah, we'll talk too much about that. But um, <laughs> and, um, I was actually there on stage that day. It was quite mad. But um, why did you on the show last week as well? Oh. Like, we spoke about it. Yeah, mad. Yeah, that mad, was mad. that was. Um, that, and I had to do a PA after that. We had to do <laughs> oil after the crash. We had to come up and do oil, and it was just like this is awkward. But anyway, so um, why did he call me up and he was like, "Biz," he's like, "Listen, right now we got to do our own thing. You got the album. Come and link me in later now." Give me all your tunes. And I was like, all right, cool. So I gave him some tunes from Morphire Crew. He's like, yeah, I'm going radio now. The bus is on the radio. We just got to do our thing. This is our thing. So New Lane, we're doing our own thing. And I, I remember thinking, what are you talking about, bro? Like, <laughs> we mean doing our own thing. Like, we're, like, we're, just, we're just putting tunes out. He's like, no, no, no. We've got to do our own thing. And he was on the radio playing the tunes. Like, yeah, Morphire Crew. We didn't have a name this time. We weren't grime. Yeah. But he was making it known, like, this is our thing. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Like, we're not with them lot anymore. Like, this is us, sort of thing. And then, um, I just remember seeing the transition and then Ozzy B was like, Ozzy B was like my Arsene Wenger. He was a sick scout and he he basically found all the... Did he have the long puffer jacket though? <laughs> you might have stolen Stone Island one still. You might have yeah. the Stone Island one. Yeah, the East was, London remix. Trust me. And he brought all the youngers, like all these fire camera like face and all those guys. He was like, Biz, there's these guys in the ends. We need to bring them in because they're really hungry and they really want to do this. And I heard their bars. I was like, yeah, this is the next generation. And that's when Fire Camp formed and obviously Road Deep, Nasty Crew, everyone was just doing crews. And then Pirate Radio was like, basically our Radio One. We used to go there, promote ourselves, practice our skills, you know, find any house party, any rave that's, that's playing our type of music, drive up there, not getting paid. Literally, our paycheck was getting a reload. If you got a reload, yeah, yeah, that, you're, like, you're happy. Yeah, 100%. You know, if you care, you spent, I don't know, 50 pound on petrol, which was a lot of money for us then days, like doing nothing, for, like basically doing it for no money. And um, that was basically what it was. It was like, no, let's just get reloads, man. And just, you know what I mean? Just go out of the country, you know what I mean? Talk to Crazy. Tutu Gal and just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Beat those cool dons. It was a very, 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 very fun time, man. Very and fun, very fun, man. I, to some, like, I, when I try to explain to people, man, like those days, like, 
It's so I wish it was more documented, man. Yeah. There's a few videos. There's a few, yeah. There was no YouTube. Yeah, there was no YouTube. Like, there's so much that people have missed out, which I kind of feel for them because it was so fun, man. That's, like, just, that's one of the main reasons why you know I wanted to have this in depth yeah. chat on Tuesdays. Not only with like legends like yourself, we are gonna get you know some of the newer artists yeah. on, but just to, to so people really know yeah. the history and what trust me, man. There's a lot of to depth. go through. There's a lot of depth. We have to go through so much, Crazy. man. I, so we're much. gonna talk about more of that, including like more. More fire, like fire camp versus yeah. roll deep. Oh beefs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Channel U, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> Motley, Motley's at the back. Motley's in the building. He was loving all that. Oh wow, <laughs> days. We got a lot to talk about. Plus, of course, like so much has happened, like in the success story of Lethal Bizzle and everything around. We got we got a lot to get through yeah, in the next yeah. thirty-five minutes. Yes. But I feel like we have to talk about and play. The record that you know is still an absolute grime classic today. Yes. What 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 made you want to call up those those what seven eight MCs and just do an eight bar? Because it let's let's be clear, eight bar songs weren't yeah the huge thing. Nah, people it wasn't. were doing regular sixteen bar verse, yeah, a yeah. chorus, you know. And you you were like, I'm just gonna put a load of guys back to back. You know where it was, yeah. So at that time, I was on pirate radio a lot, and I was doing loads of radio all over the country. I had a little squad. It was me, Fuming, um, Napa. Um, Demon, Aussie B. We used to just jump in my golf. We'll go to Deja Vu in East London. We'll drive to West London, do Freeze FM. We'll go to um, Shepherd Puss, go Ice. We'll go all these pirate radio stations every single week. So anytime we go there, we'll buck up all the man name as well who'll be there as well. So I kept hearing all these people's lyrics. And then Dizzy won the Mercury. And everyone was like, yes! We're gone. This is what the Mercury. We're gone. Everyone yes. Thought it was like Noah's Everyone Ark. Everyone's about to get on like, Noah's yes. Ark. And just go. I was like, yes, it's, it's on. And the next minute, I'm just there twiddling my thumbs. I'm like, but my, my phone's not ringing. Like, the ladies are not calling. Like, why are the ladies not calling? Like, I've got balls. Like, what's going on? I'm getting big reloads. Like, why are we not getting signed? So I remember thinking to myself, you know what? I'm going to start my own label, man. Lethal Bizzle Records. And the first tune I want to do, I want to do it with a man name. So I just called out everyone. I was like, listen, I've got a tune for ID. I've got this ID for a tune. Come Command the B Studio tomorrow in Walthamstow. Um, um, just come and do an eight bar. I told him what lyric I want on the phone. Yeah. Funny one with D Double is I was like, yeah, D Double, I want you to come and spit eight bar. You know that bar. You, you know that bar. You goes, I got sixteen bar. Hot light tar. Oh yeah. Be a star. Oh, so and you, and you he, actually requested that yeah, bar from me. And he was biz. like, my biz though. That's not sixteen bar though. So, uh, you want eight bar? That's a sixteen <laughs> bar though. So I'm like, I can't do that. Like, I can't do that. I was like, oh, just put it. I say, just wow. say, I spit. I quit eight bar. So it was nah, nah, nah. It ain't gonna work, man. But I'll come anyway. So he came. Everyone's in the studio. Funny story, I think I've said it a few times, but no one liked the beat of Pow. What? Nobody liked the beat. Wow. I think me, Forza, and Napa, I don't even think they really were sure, but I think they just believed in me. Wow. They're just like, Biz, it's you, so let's go. Like, that flow beat down. is so hard, though. Bro, D Double was mocking it. He was like, wow. boom, 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 <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Is that what is this, man? He was like, bro, the tunes are hard. Like Nico's even like, mm, I'm not too sure about this, but I'll do it though. <laughs> Literally, the wow. majority of people just like, because it's you, Biz, I'm doing it. I was like, trust me, bruv, this tune's this, this tune's hard, bro. Because like, them times there, you guys, Wiley, Danny, it was all the Esky sound. It kind, yeah, it, it kind of was like, it, you was, had, yeah. it was a little bit different from what Very was going different. on. Like, and like, that was the in thing. Yeah. And if it wasn't that, everyone was a bit like, nah, they'll be alien, like, mm, what is this? So I was yeah. like, nah, bruv, this is going to be the game changer. Wow. So I was just guessing him to myself. I'm thinking, boy, I hope this works because I, I like the beat, but yeah. I don't know if it's going to go crazy how I'm trying to guess it to them. So we've done the record. And after we've done it, I remember sitting there listening to it. And then I was like, mm, yeah, it sounds nice, man. Yeah, like, I didn't know how big it was going to be. But I thought, yeah, it sounds cool. Then Command and B played it on the radio without me tell without telling me, could we done it in his, uh, his studio? I was like, just hold on to it. Then I woke up one day and I just saw missed calls, texts. I was like, what's going on? Why is my phone blowing up? Oh, hey, that power song, you need to send it to me. I think Cameo them times, he was doing wow. like, the, the, the pirate session. Yeah. Yo, yo, send me that tune. I'm like, have you heard the song? So I heard it last night, Command and B played it. Crazy. All these other DJs I've never heard of texting me thinking, yeah, brother, I need a dub plate, need a dub plate. I'll give you money for it. I'm thinking, huh? I'm like, bro, like, calm down, like, the tune's not even coming out for now. And then, pff, yeah, Pirate Radio really made that song what it was. And then wow. we done a video, big up Mo Alley, quick little 100 pound budget video. I remember that, I was at that video yeah, shoot as well, in yeah. the, the garages. Yeah, garages. And he was just like, boom, he was just like, please, I want to do the video. Like, give me, I'm a new director. And I was like, bro, these times here, like, this is my first independent video, so go for it. And yeah. I wasn't even thinking to do a video, but if you want to do it, go for it. And then I think when the video went on telly, is when it went to another level. Like, everyone up the country saw it, and then people were just like, 
wow. Like even my manager today, she wasn't my manager at the time. I think she saw that and she was like, rah, like what is this? And then she got in contact and she was my press officer at the time and she was doing our press. Later on, become my manager. I still is my manager to this day. And, um, but yeah, the record just touched so much different people, man. And to this day, it's still Jeez. a monster. Like, I, I drop this in clubs still regularly. Yeah, it's mad. And it's always been the same reaction. 13 years old. <laughs> Crazy, mad, and yeah, that that is just an absolute. Yeah, it's, classic. A, it's a monster, man. I remember like some real fun times going to PA. All of us, like two tour buses, ten man, going all up and down the country. And when it got to Demons, bitch, you know what happened? Oh, I was about wow. to do the whole song again. <laughs> Back the to the whole beginning. Song to like it was just, it was fun, man. I remember just being in the tour bus, like everyone busting joke, and and remember like. People in power from different crews. So obviously I was Fire Camp. And that was also something that was like very n- new. Yeah, never. Obviously, Road Deep and Fire Camp were like arch enemies. That's what I'm saying. It was like, it came to a point where like, we could like, even when we saw each other, yeah, it, was it, was, it was bare tension. Bookie, yeah. I remember there was like an Urban Music Awards yeah, yeah, once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Backstage, they were, they it got a bit trying, mad. They were like, they were like really trying to keep Roll Deep and yeah, Fire Camp, Fire Camp apart. Yeah, and yeah, for yeah. some act, someone yeah, made a mistake and we ended up on the same yeah. corridor, like yeah, the same it, staircase. It, it, it was like a wrestling match. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> yeah, we were pushing, like, we did, we did. What, come and go outside. Like, it was, it was tense. But like, to be fair, I don't think it was like, it was, it was never like, Ever yeah. malicious yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, it was yeah. just kind it, of it was competitive, energy. innit? It was competitive. Obviously, we're both from East London, two crews, me and Wiley were going at it yeah. as well, with like the two henchos at the time. And it was just like status, like, yo, like we're better than you, I know, we're better than you. So it was just like one of those kind fun of things. Fun days though, man. Very I fun, feel man. like those kind of those situations, not just those, but like all of those situations what helped build like hundred percent artists 100%. like yourself, man. Hundred percent, man. You know what I mean? Like I think like why a lot of people from our generation are still around is just that we we really was trained, like without even realizing, you know, even going on pirate radio, doing like stage shows and underground, that that got us ready that like, we can do the festivals and shut it down. And people yeah. were like, how do you do this? You, like, yeah. This is what we do. This is just like what we what we've been doing, you know and, what I mean? And some of the conditions, like I think like something wasn't working in one of these studios oh, yeah. the other day, and it's like, oh, you're gonna be around. I was like, what? have you, Bro, you didn't see what I, I used to, spit to broadcast bars from. on a microphone, like on a headphone. That was a microphone sometimes. Yeah, yeah. The, the headphones was the microphone in, in Pirate Radio. Trust me, like you had to work with it, man. Crazy conditions. And then just like that, forward rhythm drops. Grime is now, you know, yeah. becoming a recognized thing. Yeah. It, it, it was a game changer. Channel U had a massive impact. Oh, huge, 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 that. huge impact. Big up um, Darren, who passed away last year as well. He had a, you know what I mean? He really invested in this whole thing. So big him up as well. But Definitely, Channel U definitely gave us our own lane. You know, it gave us another avenue to showcase our music. You know, everything was very corporate at the time. No one was really kind of like supporting urban music apart from one extra and a few other people. But for that national scale, you know, Channel U, you know, it gave us a face. It get it put yeah. it put a face to the name. You know what I mean? And exactly. uh, people could more like relate to the eyes. Now, um, off the back of Pal and, and the forward with him, yes, it had been probably like a year or two later. Yeah. But what was it like when you got the phone call? Or what, you might have even been in the in the venue at the time. But I remember it kind of just spreading around like wildfire that Jay-Z had a concert and he, oh, he yeah. came out and no one was expecting this. He came out yeah. and, and done some bars over Pow, like the, <sighs> the instrumental or forward with him. Mad. And I'm, it was literally, that was like another like... Yeah, it was ridiculous. A like, crazy moment. I got the phone call, yeah, and I thought man was lying. I think um, Semtex hit me up. And um, he was like, yo, there's, there's, there, there might be a possibility that Jay-Z might use Pow for his tour. And I was like... Well, where? Well, he goes, look, he asked me to submit some songs. He said he submitted Pow, he submitted Stand Up Tour, and I think he submitted one other one, I can't think. And he goes, I don't know if he's going to choose Pow, but I'm just letting you know. The next minute I get a call from some DJ called Green Lantern. I'm like, okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. So yes, the great Green Lantern, man. I'm like, yeah, 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 cool. I know the name, but he goes, yeah, I'm Jay-Z's DJ. I'm like, yeah, cool. Because, yeah, we're going to use your joint for, for the tour. I'm like, okay. He goes, yeah, yeah, so I'm just, I'm just letting you know, I'm like, you know, like, and he, I think he wanted a special or something as well. So I was like, yeah, 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 no problem, no problem. So I was in Amsterdam and um, these times um, I used to chat to Rio Ferdinand quite a lot. And then he called me and I could hear power in the background. And I could hear, ah, 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 <laughs> screaming. And I'm thinking, what are you saying? Jay-Z, Pow, wow. Jay. And I'm thinking, hold on a minute. Then he texts me. And I was thinking, oh my God, brother, I'm at Wembley Arena, Jay-Z just dropped POW and the whole place is going mad. Crazy. I was just like, no, I need to see this. So I came back, heard he was doing a show at Royal Albert Hall. I was trying to get tickets, brother, I had to pay for a ticket outside from a tout wow. in the end. 150 pounds. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I had to pay for a ticket because I, like, I have to see this. But the ticket was sick though, because I was in a box. I was actually in Def Jam's box. So oh, I was wow. like, how did I get that? So I was in there. And then they knew when it was coming. And then... 
I see champagne bottles coming. Now thinking, what's going on? The song come on next minute. I'm drinking champagne. I could just about enjoy the moment that wow. like, the tunes come on. And he had an orchestra, like a 30 piece orchestra playing power with like strings. And then I was just like, wow. Do you know what? Like we, we managed, like we was like, we got to try and find a clip of it somehow. Like we managed to fish a little clip of it. Oh, did you? Of YouTube. It's not the best quality for anyone listening, but this was that moment what you were talking about yeah. when you was probably drenched in yeah, champagne. I was drenched champagne. As this was actually happening at Mental. the Royal Albert Hall. It literally sounds like it's through yeah. someone's phone, but you yeah. get it. I can't even tell what bar he's saying. That was definitely bum, bum, mad. Bro, my heart. Check, like, I, I got crazy. a story as well. I met him um, just a few years after that. I went to, um, he done a gig with... Um, Who's the rock guys he done a song with? Oh, um, Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park, yeah, yeah. So he done a gig, um, Milton Keynes Bowl, I think it was. And I got invited down through a guy who used to work at Warner. He said, yeah, come down, man. You know what I mean? Jay-Z, I think um, there's a drum and bass crew at the time. I forgot where they're called. They were, they were supporting. So I was backstage now, me and Motley was there. And I'm thinking, rah, like, that's Memphis Bleak. And I was like, hold on a minute. Jay-Z's got to be nearby. Oh, Jay-Z's got to be somewhere. Hold on, that's for real. Huh? What's going on? Literally... I turn around, Jay Z standing behind me. I I I bricked it. I was like, I don't know what to do. Do I go and talk to him? So I thought I see Memphis B could be a bit more friendly. He was just kind of like being like just cool. So I said, Yo, what's going on? My name's Lethal B, man. Like, um, the Pow song. He's like, Ah, oh. he, he knew it straight away. I was like, Yo, I just want to say like, what's up to Jay? And he was like, Yeah, just go, just go talk to him. I was just like, uh, I was trying to make him be like, Yeah, let me introduce yeah. you. So he didn't do it. So I was like, Ah, oh, oh, my time will come. So anyway, we left the dressing room area. And we thought we were going to watch Jay-Z on the stage. So we've gone up the stage and then there was some security guy who was like, no, you can't come. You've got to go back down. And I was like, oh, I want to watch the show now. You can't watch the show from the stage. So me and Mutley's turned down, turned around, gone down the stairs. Who's coming up the stairs? Jay-Z. Wow. These Touch. times I'm thinking, oh, man. But I'm thinking, what do I say? Like, I'm like nervous. Then I've gone, yo, man, how you doing? My man's evil Bizzle, man. Um, you done my track, pal. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember, man. Yeah, that joint's crazy, man. I was like, yeah, but I said thank you about 18 million <laughs> times in the space of 10 seconds. I was like, yeah, thank you very much for doing that, man. Like, I really be like, thank you. And he he just, he didn't stop looking in my eyes. Like, he just looked in my eyes the whole way through. Wow. And he was just looking at me. And I was like, bro, what are you trying to hypnotize me right now, bro? Like, I'm already hypnotized. Like, say something. Then he just nodded his head. And he was like, yeah, man, nice, nice to meet you, man. Like, nice to meet you. I was like, yeah, 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 cool. And then Memphis Peak was like, I told you, man. It's cool, man. And Sick. then we watched the show. He didn't do Power Then, but we watched the show and he, he tore it down. But yeah, that was a that was a memorable moment. Legendary moment, man. And do you know he's done a verse on Power? I didn't know that. There's a verse, there's a lost verse on wow. Power. And I might get in trouble for this, but I'm going to pull it out there anyway. Basically, so Green Lantern, after all that happened and they saw the reaction, they saw how big the record was, Green Lantern was like, look, Jay-Z wants you to do a chorus for Pow and he's going to do a verse. Whoa. And I was like, okay, went shooter straight away. I done a chorus like, Pow, it's that uh -uh, Jay-Z, Pow, leader of the ROC, Jeez. Pow. I done a chorus fully. Jeez. I said it to him, he's like, yeah, Jay-Z loves it, he loves it, he loves it. I'm going to hit you up in a few days. A few days is going by now. Didn't hear nothing. So I hit up Green Lantern. Then some big story came out that him and Jay-Z fell out. So anyway, cut a long story short, I found out he did record it and apparently in the verse he's dissing someone wow. and he doesn't want it to come out because oh. if it comes out we're, like I don't, if it know comes out, that, I don't know where that verse is but we need, bro, to, that's what I mean. we need to get a search Yo, party we've been trying like Let's me and Just Blaze has kind of like became friends over the last few years and he said he, Just Blaze said he's heard it and I knew he wasn't lying because he's told me you done a chorus right I was like yeah he goes you should start about Jay-Z R I said yeah he goes yeah he goes you know I'm going to call Jay-Z right now I can't, and believe, I can't believe what I've just found out Literally, like, there's, like, a Jay -Z there's a Jay-Z verse, verse on Powell for Powell there is if oh, anyone bro. interviews Jay-Z Ask him, can we get the verse for Pow, please? Just, just, just mute the bit where you're dissing that guy, so he doesn't get a come up from you. But we need to hear that, man. We need to hear that. Crazy. And it, and that, that that's that's from like Just Blaze, and people don't know who Just Blaze is. He made like Jay Z's biggest yeah, he's, hit records. He's like, a legendary. You know what I mean? Certified. You know what I mean? So me and him have been trying to get it. So apparently, Green Lantern's Green Lantern's got it in his laptop and. 
Westward, I spoke to a few, I think last year, told me he had a conversation with Green Lantern and he was teasing him like, yeah, I got it. Do you want to listen to it? You want to listen to it? Oh. Westward was like, I don't want to beg him, man. I don't want to beg. So wow. I was just like, guys, oh, whatever, man. But we we got to get hold of Green Lantern. We get need to get hold of Jay-Z. Get hold of them, Someone man. better call It exists. It's somebody. out there. Trust me. That That's has crazy. to happen, man. That would just like make the song come like real. It's already alive, but it would just like, probably chart. It would just go nuts. Yeah, that would, that would be flying what? straight back in, man. Crazy. That's, that's crazy. Now, like, we, there's been so much to talk about of those early days, yes. like, and we've barely touched on, yeah, you know, the new days, the, man. The Lethal Bizzle as a solo artist out yeah. there, like, almost like you've got this, this way of reinventing yourself. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like in the last few years, you, you've done a, a, an amazing job of, of just remaining, fr- keeping fresh and, yeah. and staying on top of things. And yeah. you, you've you've never really, you've never not been around. Yeah. You're not one of those artists who kind of disappear for two years and nah, return or whatever. Man. You've always been really consistent. But, you know, last, like like I mentioned, two, three years. Yeah, it's gone mental. It's, it's definitely gone mental. It's gone mental. And I think, like, you know what it was? It, it, it's a case of... Um, trying to like you know people think like because you're like at a certain level you don't have to go through certain barriers and certain hurdles you gotta jump over like you know i've been told no then i've been told the more no's and yes and i think that really built my my mentality to succeed even more and i just found other avenues to to promote myself and showcase my music and showcase my personality because you know my music's very aggressive in the early days and i think it, it turned you know people who may not necessarily understand it it turned them off a bit they'll be like oh who's this lethal b pow oh my god is he gonna is he gonna bring a weapon to the, to the, to the, to the to the venue like so you know social media and stuff like that and doing TV has really helped me to showcase a different side to me where people feel like oh like this is cool man like he's just like us like one of the boys and um, I've really t- utilised that and you know channel my music through it as well as well as just people getting to know me as, as a person man I, I feel like we, we need to still talk about Dench, the, the oh, clothing yeah. label. We still need to talk about, you know, the, the new album dropping. We yes. still need to talk about so Grime much, in so 2017. Much. But let's play Let's play one of those records that uh, has just been like a, a smash hit. And every time you perform it, I'm sure it gets exactly the same reaction. Oh, wow, yeah. This one is... This is crazy. You I never saw this coming. Like, I remember Distortion played me a couple of these rhythms and then a, a few weeks later, you came and met me and Danny and you said, I've got yeah, a few new tunes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. this was one of them. Yeah. When you left, we were like, he's going to go clear with these, bro. <laughs> I think it's a classic, man. I think, you know, it's one of those records that's going to be here for a very long time, man. You play it in 10 years, I think it's definitely going to have that reaction, man. It's just timeless, man. Big up uh, Distortion the production. Amazing producer, man. You and him just got that, that you just click. In yeah, the studio, man. man. He's from Holland. And the funny thing is, when I first met him, he didn't really know who I was. And yeah. then I told him, yeah, I used to be in a crew called Morphite Crew. And he's like, what? I said, well, you know about Morphite? He goes, yeah. And I go, what? You know about Oi? He goes, yeah. And I was like, oh, I'll tell the lie. We actually went to Holland and performed. And he's like, bro, like, Oi was his, like, his record. Yeah. And then we just gelled, man, in real good energy. And we made, like, so many songs. Man. Some songs we ain't even put out yet. We made Festus Gank a year before it even came out. Crazy. So much music we've done. And, and you know, one of the biggest lines on that record, <laughs> which, you know, is to the detriment of somebody else. Let's not get it twisted. But you man are bankrupt. You man are bankrupt. <laughs> Gazer. <laughs> so, like, I don't fact really want to go into. Only. I don't really want to go into too much depth on it, but <laughs> <laughs> whole studio's busting up. <laughs> but that that whole situation with, yeah, it's, with it's, yourself and yeah, then it's, it's, like, it's, it's been put to bed now. But it was just a situation that I had to kind of get off my chest because we had a little situation. Well, it was more to Lisa basically when Lisa. it was just like I sent her something to do a record and she kind of used the idea for themselves yeah. and didn't tell me and I was just like, oh, I'm not having that. And obviously they kind of use their power of thinking oh well we're doing dubs and we could do what we want and I was like I don't care I'm little leaf will be down here but I'm going to have to say my piece. And before even Fessa come out, I was on socials. No one believed me. Everyone was like, oh, Biz was just trying to create hype. And I was like, nah, bro, this they is were, They were literally like flying at they the time They were killing it. Well. They were doing like, arena. Smash hit singles. Yeah. Arenas, they, were, the they were doing their thing. And I was just doing like, you know, like Liquid and Envy still. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> they, were just, they were just trying to just part me off. And I was like, I can't do it. I'm not, I'm not from that cult. I'm from a different era. Like, you don't do that. You don't yeah. send someone a song and then then that you don't hear from them and next minute they've used your bars i'm like what like is that what they, is that what we're, what we're doing now so i had to just you know get that off my chest and um and yeah man but um big up gazer <laughs> <laughs> salute big up to end dubs of course man maybe one day we might see them reunited 
and doing yeah, their Yeah, I think they need to know. do. I think they're trying this solo stuff. I think they need to just get back together. I think that's the, that's the best chance they've got of, you know, because that's what people know them for. You know what I mean? Dappy's really talented. Um, but, you know, I think as a trio, they're, you know, they the are shout, who they man. are. So. Now, you know, not only have you, you expanded and, and, and taken your music to a next level, you everyone's got merchandise. Everyone's kind of doing yeah. the clothing line at the minute. That's like the in thing. But yourself and, and your brand, Dench, yeah, yeah. have literally like, You've really, yeah, really, changer. yeah, like you've done like real big, yeah. real big numbers, yeah, and like no, definitely, man. you've been like leading streetwear brand in Selfridges, for yeah, example, or yeah. like the online sales are ridiculous. Yeah, it's been amazing. I mean, and it's been a game changer, and it's been a door opener as well. I got to big up my boy Frimpong as well, who definitely opened me up to a whole new world, which is probably the most powerful industry in this country, which is the football world. Yeah. And um, once they got hold of it, it's where it just took it to another level, and it just introduced me to them as well. Like, okay, who's this Lethal Bizzle guy that Frimpong rolls with? Oh, okay, he's his cousin. Okay, he does music. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I like this guy. He's all right. And then that was a new audience for me as yeah. well as a clothing. It was a music audience. So that really helped. But yeah, it's been going on for like, what, five years now? You know, we've been in Selfridges. It was actually in the Arsenal store for one season as well, wow. in the mega store, um, which was amazing. Um, but yeah, it's been going from strength to strength, man. And I feel like, you know, it's a it's a way for people just to like know that, you know, you can, you can do your own thing, man. You know what I mean? Represent your, yourself, represent UK stuff. You know, what I mean, we've been following all the other brands all around the world. Just, you know, what I mean, it's not hard to. Well, it's, it, obviously, it's not hard. It is, it is hard work. But you know, what I mean, if you want to do something, just go out and do it, man. It definitely, can, it can be done. And your, your testament to that, yeah, man. Definitely, man. I like the new range as well, bro. Yeah, man, I've got you some pieces Chase. there. Yeah, done, no, check that out. Chase. Chase.com, plug, plug, plug. I know, we're looking fresh, 2017. Like, know. we've literally got like 10 minutes. Wow, like, is that how quick it's I gone? I know, it's crazy. Like, Jeez. I feel like I've just been down the pub having a, like, a proper little catch up. <laughs> you know, like, it's one of those ones. But Grime in 2016 felt amazing. Yeah, it, it felt like all of that, or everything we spoke about in the first yeah. 45 minutes of this conversation. Yeah, it's like we're graduating now. Yeah. It was like, those days was like, we were just, you know, learning our craft within primary school, second, now it's like, it's graduation now. Literally. You know? It's time to get our degrees and, you know what I mean, go out and fly and just, you know, do our thing. Who, who, who are you feeling at the moment? Out, out of the new wave um, of MCs? AJ Tracy. Um, I'm loving like, the, the Abracadabras, yeah. the Kojo Funds. Um, Kojo's killing it. They yeah. all are actually. Yeah, they all, all are, are, man. That whole new generation, and I like that they they respect the history and they respect the culture. You know, um, yeah, man. Who else? There's so many other guys out there. I'm, Section Boys. There's literally like so many. Yeah, imagine Section Boys covered Oi. They done a cover of Oi. I'm, I was play. I played that. And it's like you know, what I mean, it makes you really. It makes me proud though, because it's like you know, 15 years later, it's you know, mad. these new kids are still like bumping to it. Stormzy spitting over old Ross Squad yeah. beats and having like hits with it. And yeah, it just like, shows you like it was ahead of our time, man. You know what I mean? And it's, it was quality music, and it's here to stay, definitely. Now, 2017 is, is looking like already. It's Jeez. gonna be a massive year for you because we we premiered the brand new single last yes. night. Which yes. we're going to end on. We're okay. going to end on that. In a couple, I've already played it in this show, but it's yeah. a great excuse thank to play you. it again. Thank you. Thank because you. it is hard. And it's going mad. It's like the, I, we put the video out last night. We've done a hundred thousand views in a day. Crazy. Like I don't think I've ever done that in my life. Like a hundred thousand views a week was like, yeah, you're killing it. But yeah. a day, mad. Like pff, that's like I, I don't even know what that is. That's just that's scary. So that's the album Lennox Road. Yes, Lennox Road. Um, people want to know what that is. Lennox Road is basically the road I grew up on. I was born in. Um, Lennox Road was the road where I thought of the power idea, the Oys, wow. my first album, you know, um, that was basically like the road and the area that formed me. So um, this album is more of a journey, uh, talking about kind of like where I kind of started up until now, you know, cause I've got a lot of new fans, do you may not necessarily know the, the journey. So, um, so yeah, I'm really excited about the album, man. Um, it's probably me personally, I feel like some of my best work I've done. Um, in the last, say, five, ten years. And, and you mentioned as well when we were on the phone um, when we premiered the new single that yes. everyone you're work, <laughs> excuse me, everyone you're working with on this album yes. you've not worked with before. Yeah, the features. Um, yeah, more or less all the features I've never done. So obviously the first single with gigs, I've never done a tune with gigs before. Um, and there's a few other big features which I won't disclose yet because I don't want to spoil the excitement. But um, we've got some monsters, man. And like, you know, I, I thought people would like this song. I was like, okay, cool. Like, I love the response, but what I got Mad. coming? <laughs> if you like this, then... like this is this is what kind of scares me. You're you're saying this is like this is just this, this, the kind this, of this is like a reintroduction. Like, hey, I got an album coming. Do you like this one? Oh, you like it? You really like it? Oh, well, boy. 
You're yeah. in for a treat then. This like this has gassed me. Like I'm not gonna lie, I'm gassed for. The, I'm definitely super gassed yeah. to hear the album. If this is what we. If this is like the levels that. We, yeah, this is this is definitely the level that I'm going for. If not beyond, man. Crazy. If nah. not beyond. Once you know the 2017 and beyond, like you said, it's looking like this grime thing and, and this UK yeah. thing as a whole is is about to take over the world. It already is. Yes. It's not even about to. Definitely. We. It's already happening. Man like Skepta, I just got to say, big him up as well because I've been around the world of him a few places and just the way that people are receiving himself and yeah. the culture. I went to South by Southwest and I done power at his show and the Americans are just getting it's mental. We were out like, there as well, literally like... Crazy. Like, I was just man. like, yo, they're ready for this. And I yeah. feel like, obviously, it's new. And I've always said to myself, we're never going to break the world imitating other people. Speaking American, dressing like them, trying to in- embrace their culture. It's cool. We'll take a little bit of it, but we've got to do us. We've got to speak how we speak. We've got to dress how we dress. We've got to sound how we sound. And I think that's why we're penetrating and we're really making a mark in music right now, no, around the world. Doubt. Without a doubt. Like, like you mentioned, South by Southwest. I'm, while we were out there, like we went out out to the uh, um, the outskirts of Austin, Texas, okay. to like one of those shopping outlets where okay, they have loads okay. of deals and cheap uh, okay. whatever. <laughs> we was in there, I was just getting some trainers, and the guy must have noticed my accent. He was like, "Oh, like, where are you from?" I said, "London." Still didn't really care. Then yeah. he like, as he came back to bring me my size, he was like, "You heard a Skepta?" <laughs> I was like, "Have I heard a Skepta?" But I said, "He's like, wow. he's a close friend of mine. Like, I've I've worked with him." The guy couldn't believe it. Like, this wow. was like nothing to do with the festival. He wasn't. He was like way just out. Normal, yeah. Just done. He went and got his phone. He wanted to take pictures. He was like, "You actually, you met? So wait, you're telling me you DJ was Skepta?" Like, he couldn't <laughs> believe it. But I think he actually thought I was lying a yeah, little bit. Yeah, that like, was that much. It's and, crazy. Like, like one thing about Americans, like. When they respect your art, they respect your art yeah. and they respect everything about it. They want to know everything, your life story, your everything. And um, Skepta has definitely made a mark. Like even I was in um, I was in Prague for Stag last year and um, this guy was like, yeah, man, like, because some some fans were out there and they were taking pictures of me and the guy was like, who are you, man? Like, why are people taking pictures of you? I was like, oh, I do music in the UK, like, um, part of like scene, grime scene. Grime scene? Oh, you know, BBK, Skepta? Wow. I was like, yeah, 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 that's my boy. He goes, yeah, man. He goes, yeah, we love Skepta. Like, Skepta's like, he reminds us like of one of us, like the Europe, like, you know, you got Drake, you got Lil Wayne, but Europe, we got Skepta. And I was like, yeah, I never, never I never looked at it like that because I think like UK kind of segregates itself from the rest of Europe, yeah. but they're really embracing it and taking him like as one of their own. So I was like, that's so sick, man. Crazy. Like, I can't believe like we're almost out of time. It's Jeez. almost like we're going to, we're going to have to do like a part two yeah, of this in, to, in, bro, in, so in a couple months time or something. No, but definitely, I, definitely. I know people are going to be taking this in your <laughs>